الحمد لله وكفى الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالاه Brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah, tonight marks the tenth night of Ramadan and the final of the first ashara. The first ten nights according to a hadith of Salman radiallahu ta'ala, uh, these are the ten nights of Allah's mercy. If we can leave this ashara, understanding what mercy is, then we've accomplished something. If a person goes to Medina Munawwara even for 30 hours or 24 hours, but they leave from there taking with them the serenity of Sunnah, the great example of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, they've taken more than enough. So, moving along as we enter this 10th night and 10th day, inshaAllah, I want to begin by making a correction uh, to the story yesterday. That Sa'ab ibn Malik ta'ala, when he narrated this story to his son who narrated this in hadith uh, This story when it was recorded and narrated at that time Ka'ab uh, was, uh, was blind But at that time he was uh, with his sight Another thing that we should know about Ka'ab ibn Malik ta'ala, Not only is he a Khazraji amongst the two Arab tribes of Medina out in Khazraj He was from Khazraj but he was the first Muslim, from the first batch of Muslims from Medina Munawwara. Uh, he was amongst the first 40 that led the Friday prayer before the migration of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in Medina Munawwara. And also he was amongst the 73 who came and made the pledge of allegiance, Bayatul Aqaba, to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, uh, where of course he embraced Islam. He missed out on Tabuk as it was discussed and that was a personal reason behind it. Uh, he also missed Badr. And one of the things was that um, very important to point out that at the time when the boycott was instated, that the three Sahabas were boycotted from the society, two of them stayed at home crying. Two of them stayed at home crying and asking Allah for forgiveness. Ka'ab bin Malik was out in the streets trying to understand the reality of this. He'd meet with friends and they'd turn around. He would see the Prophet ﷺ smiling and then he would turn around. He would try to get his salam to him and no one was listening to him. It became the talk of the town and more that Ka'ab bin Malik has been boycotted by the Prophet Muhammad Now understand this, this is where it gets interesting. <coughs> the king of Sham, from the Ghassanid, he was a Christian king. He sent a personal letter with a delegation from Sham to Medina. When they came to Medina, they asked, where's Ka'ab bin Malik? At that time, no one was speaking to them. So the Sahabas indicated towards him, that's him. They went up to him and said, this is a letter, a personal message from the Ghassanid king of Sham, the Christian king. In it, he stated that we see that the people of Muhammad wasallam have been very disrespectful to you. Come to us. Come to Christianity. Come to us. We will give you comfort. Now I know, I know, everything in our Islamic culture today isn't perfect. I'll be the first one to admit it. I know that there is a level of harshness in our demeanor, in our culture, in our trend, in our way. And it is this void of compassion, of respect, of goodness that people of other faiths feed off of. Oh, but your religion isn't merciful. We'll give you some mercy. 
Your religion isn't kind to you. It's disrespectful to your kind and to women. Come to us, we'll take care of you. Islam never spread by pointing out a flaw in another religion. Islam spread by pointing out something good that was missing in society. We're not here to say this is missing. We're showing you that this can be, this could be inculcated in society, so people could live by it, and everyone could benefit from it. So when he was in his worst condition, in the most vulnerable moment of his life, after being a Muslim, and then being shunned by the Muslim, only for the king to send a letter saying, your people of Muhammad have disowned you, they have shunned you from society, come, come to Sham, join us, convert to Christianity, we will be your brother. I was in the Hor Pakistan in 2001. And at that time, the YC, uh, uh, what is it? YMCA and the y, uh, YWCA. Christianity was spreading the fastest that time in Pakistan. Christianity is spreading in Arabia, it's spreading in Africa, it's spreading in the Muslim countries. And what they're saying is, this is something that you're missing in your faith. If you come to us, we will fill that void. That is why my fellow Muslims, I'm not here to talk about comparative religion tonight. I'm not here to bash the Christian brothers and sisters. I'm here to say one thing. It is due time that we wake up and live our faith so that there is no flaw in our practice and our actions of our faith. Because if our religion is flawless, if the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect, then why is there continuous imperfection in the Muslims? Ask yourself this question. Why? What has gone wrong? The answer is, I have gone wrong. What will make things better? I need to make myself better. Enough finger pointing. Enough finger pointing. We have learned from mistakes over and over again. <coughs> it is time that we just don't learn that those mistakes exist. We correct those mistakes also. <coughs> so then, moving along, of course, he did not pay two cents of attention to the Ghassan, the king of Sham, letter. But he stayed put, and we know 40 days after, they were told to separate from their family. It was only 50 days in when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down their forgiveness. He went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was smiling like the 14th moon, and he said, Abshir, Abshir ya Ka'ab, glad tidings, O Ka'ab, it's a day as if your mom has given birth to you. Kayawmin waladatka ummuk. Brothers and sisters, for those who haven't experienced their rebirth, need to experience it once more. The Hajj is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go for the Hajj, enter into Arafah, and exit from there, Kayawmin waladatka ummuk, the day your mother has given birth to you. Let us reset ourselves. Let us reset our lives and our priorities and our preferences so that we can connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was so happy that he said, Ya Rasulullah Wasallam, I want to give you my wealth as an expression that I honor this repentance and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has forgiven Ka'ab, he wants to give all his wealth. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, no, you keep your wealth. Allah has forgiven you. So again, if we study his story more in depth, we understand that Ka'ab, who was a Khazraji, who was a person that was lured by the Christian Ghassan al-Shin to become a Christian in his most vulnerable moment that he said, no, this is fine, what is happening to me is good, allow me to bring out goodness from it. So let us not be tools of pushing people away from Islam and when you're in the worst of your moments in life, remember, you have each other. We have each other, we need to start living by that rule. Many a times we say as a cultural expression, hey, if you need anything, just let me know. But truly, how many of us follow through with that? It is time that, that we are there for each other. For we are an ummah, 
and an ummah means being together. Moving on to Surah Hud, another heartbreaking story which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us because this is the truth. In verse number 45, the discussion ended last night with Nuh alayhi salam and his child, his son. When he was making this ark, the world was laughing at him. When you are practicing your deen and the world is laughing at you, remember, you are Nuh alayhi salam preparing for the storm. Let the people laugh. إِنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ بَدَأَ غَرِيبًا Islam began as something foreign. Islam began as something جِسْكُ كَيْتَنَا أَنْوَكَبًا It was really different. And a time is coming. وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَأَ It's gonna come again a time when Islam will be foreign in the midst of the people. Islam today is foreign amongst Muslims. Forget non-Muslims. Islam today is born amongst Muslims. This is a fact. Take it to the bank. Even amongst Muslims we cannot live our Islam because we feel a sense of pressure to do so. وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَا It will become foreign again. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu made dua. He said, فَطُوبَى لِلْغُرَبَى Glad tidings be to those who are seen as foreign. So Nuh alayhi salam is foreign. In the middle of a desert having a boat show. Making a boat, an ark in the middle of nowhere. Everyone's laughing at him, mocking him. And then the time came, he was told, bring everyone aboard. He brought everyone aboard. His son said, Dad, take it easy. <laughs> There's no ocean here. If something is coming, I'll climb to the mountain and I'll take care of myself. We know what happened. <laughs> a, a wave separated the two and he drowned. In verse number 45, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, you told me to take my family. He's my family. How come he didn't come on board? And Allah says in this verse, this verse should rip the hearts of parents. إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِكْ إِنَّهُ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ صَالِحٍ Sometimes in order to keep the family intact, we are willing to violate the commands of Allah. We are willing to pander to our children so that at least they know us as a father or a mother. Allah is telling us here, when they violate Allah's way, they will violate you also. Remember that. If they can step on Allah, they'll step on you. You are nothing big. إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِكْ O Nuh salam, He is not your family. The son that you held when he was a baby, the son that you walked with, the son that you fed, the son that you play with, the son that you tried to teach your life to, Allah is saying, the creator and the master, he's not your family. إِنَّهُ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ صَالِحٌ His deeds aren't right. And we say that the lives of prophets were so perfect, and I said it before and I'll say it again. Stop presenting the seerah and the history as if it was perfect. Islam was a struggle. Because one of the things that our generation here reads and says, you know what? Islam had its perfect stage. We don't have it. If Allah really cared about me, He would have gave me some level of perfection. He would have gave me my Makkah and Medina here in Plano or in Houston or in Dallas or in America, and I could have lived my Islam without anyone harming me, taunting me, looking at my beard or my hijab. No, it wasn't that easy at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But they stayed steadfast. They endured with faith. What we're being taught in the seerah is to endure. We're told not to give up. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story on verse number 69. وَجَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى when the angels came to Ibrahim السلام, with a very interesting glad tidings, they came to his house, he welcomed them, and he presented food, but they never reached for the food. There were angels in the form of human beings. They said, we have come to give you glad tidings of a son, Ishaq. وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبٍ And after Ishaq, Ya'qub We're here to give you glad tidings. 
He smiled. His wife smiled. He said, how can I have a baby? I'm old. He said, this is Allah's command. This is Allah's, this is Allah's decree. They said, we have come for Lut alayhi salam. We have come for Lut alayhi salam. We know from there they proceeded to Lut alayhi salam. And they were there to inform Lut alayhi salam that the punishment of Allah is now to come. The story of Lut alayhi salam is mostly discussed in the realm of homosexuality in the Muslim community. The story of Lut alayhi salam isn't homosexuality. The story of Lut alayhi salam is open, blatant immorality. When you are shameless in front of the people, when you are shameless in the world that we live in, that's Allah's punishment. When the angels came, they came running behind these angels because they looked handsome. And Lut Salam said, I have daughters. They said, we don't want your daughters. You know what we're looking for. What is this telling us? It's telling us the day sins come out of the home. And the sins become the norm in the world. There was a time that if a person ran for an elected position here in this country, any small assumption of a scandal would derail their entire campaign. We had candidates running two years ago who said, and they never won, this was local elections, not here, but other states. I've done this, 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 this. <laughs> Anyone talks about it, I already told you first. Remember. The punishment in Islam of adultery. Let me talk about this quickly. In Islam, there's a punishment for adultery. Yes, it is. Is it stoning everyone? Stoning? No. Stoning was the law of Medina Munawwara. The Quran allowed that law to stay on. The Quran actually had a verse, الشيخ والشيخة إذا زنيا فرجموهما If an old man or a old woman commits adultery, you stone them. It was a law of Medina. It's never been in the Quran. It was abrogated. In Quran, it flashes. When people, when four individuals, mature, sane adults, see two people in the act in the open. In the open. In the open. We don't go knock on people's hotel room doors and find out what they're doing. We don't, go, we don't follow people's cars or GPS. If you're doing it in the open, then it's adultery punishment. If not, the assumption doesn't fly in the court of Islam. What is Islam trying to say? Uphold modesty. Until recently in even this country and in Canada, if two people, a heterosexual couple, were getting close to each other in an airport or in a public area, people would say, go get a room. There's children here. Now no one talks about that. When shamelessness, what is the story of Lut Salam? When shamelessness prevails, the punishment of Allah is coming. What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to restore the dignity and importance of relationships which are halal, which are modest, and which stay where they have to stay. Muslims do not talk about sexual education because we see this as a taboo to talk about. When we're not talking about it, we're not educating about the love of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam with his wife, how loving he was, how caring he was, where he would put the morsel of food into the wife's mouth and he would drink from the same area that she drank from and she would lick his fingers after food. This was the love relationship of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and his wife. But we don't talk about these things because it's shameful to talk about it. So who is educating our kids? Who is educating our kids on what relationships are? I leave you with that thought. We move on to Surah Yusuf. And there's so much to speak about Surah Yusuf. It is known as Ahsanul Qasas. Allah calls it the best story. Why are stories important in Islam? Because every single aspect of the story is a gem. It's a gem has a lot of meaning in your life. Take those stories and understand its relevancy in your life, in your world today. Number two, 
It talks about the seduction. When Aziz and Mitzvah's wife seduced Yusuf alayhi salam. And this was behind 12 closed doors. And he said, Inni khafullah, I fear Allah. One of the people who will be under the throne of Allah's shade will be someone who was seduced to do something wrong. And that was also in quiet and in secret and in private. And they said, I fear Allah. Recall the story of those three men who were stuck in a cave and a boulder had closed in. And they said, pray to Allah with your good deeds. And one of them said, oh Allah, there was my cousin sister who I was greatly in love with. And she was in a great need and I used that as leverage to violate her trust. And at that time she said to me, fear Allah. And I didn't do anything. Wallah, if I did this for your sake, open this. Brothers and sisters, a relationship between a male and a female is natural, is what Allah created us for. This is something our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was very happy about and he applauded his ummah and he promoted this in his ummah. It is called marriage. Restore the importance of marriage and the work that needs to be done before marriage and the work that needs to be done after marriage because if we're not talking about it, we are losing half of our deen. I'll end by telling us all about dreams because this whole surah revolves around the dream that Yusuf Islam told his father. According to Hadith in Bukhari, Good dreams, according to hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, good dreams are 146 of nubuwa. Good dreams are 146 of prophethood. There are three types of dreams. Good dreams, dreams from the devil, and the dreams that you're speaking to yourself. What that means is, if there's something you're doing all day, you might just be dreaming about that also. It's just like a repeat uh, in your head. In regards to good dreams, don't mention it in front of anyone, especially people who may be envious. We don't talk about our good things to people. You are asking people to give you an evil eye. Well, evil eye is true. So stop speaking about it. And if you see something evil, stand up and pray to Allah. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Turn to your left side, your shoulder, and do the act of spitting. Make sure you don't spit on yourself. Just do the act of spitting because you're telling the devil, get lost. And don't tell anyone about that also because we learn from the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad uh, These dreams are hanging on the leg of a bird. When you go to interpret it, it flies, which means it happens. So if you see a bad dream, seek Allah's help and protection. Don't talk about it to anyone. Give a sadaqah for it. So with that we'll stop because there's a lot to discuss tonight and we couldn't cover all of it. But yes, one thing I want to say. The Prophet Muhammad said, Man ra'ani fil manami faqad ra'ani bil haq. If you see the Prophet Muhammad in your dream, you saw the Prophet Muhammad in your dream. Because shaitan cannot mimic the Prophet in your dream. May Allah allow all of us to see the Prophet in our dreams. May Allah allow us to see him in our dreams today and in person tomorrow. May Allah allow us to journey together to the Akhirah with the Prophet Muhammad and give us admittance into paradise with him. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khair. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar.